Hi, welcome to 2015. Happy New Year and all of that. Well, yes, it's that time of year again, isn't it, where we're all making those New Year's resolutions. And chances are, if you're watching this video, then perhaps one of your New Year's resolution is to get started with your writing, maybe to write that novel or that memoir that you've always wanted to write. So I've put together five tips to help get you started. First of all, who am I? Why should you listen to me? Well, the first thing you can see looking at these pictures is that I'm a master of disguise. Look at all those different hairstyles. Not all of that hair is my own. Um, yeah, I'll admit that now. So when I'm not sitting on other people's ponds or singing karaoke with my sister or hanging around with my lovely dogs, um, I write novels. My name's Nikki Valentine, but I also write as Nicola Monaghan. And I write in different genres. I also write script. I've written scripts for comics. I've had films made from my scripts. I've published four novels, two novellas. I've got another novel on the way. Um, I've had a certain amount of success. I've won literary prizes. I've um, been on some bestseller lists, all sorts of things. But more than anything else, the most important thing to know is that I did get started with my writing. It was probably about 15 years ago now. So I'm going to hopefully give you some hints and tips so that you can benefit from my experience, the things that I did right, the things that I did wrong, and the things that I've learned from over the years. So here goes. Stand by. Here come my top tips. So my first tip is to write, which might sound really obvious, but it can be so daunting. I remember when I was first starting out, like I said before, about 15 years ago, thinking, I know I want to write. I love books. I love reading. I love films. I want to express my own ideas in a similar way. But I didn't know what my ideas were. And in fact, this is a question I get asked a lot now. Where do you get your ideas from? Writers get asked this all the time. It's one of the bogey questions because it's actually really hard to answer. But I've thought about this a lot actually. And my theory is that the ideas actually come from the writing so that, you know, it kind of sounds like a bit of a paradox, but in order to get the ideas, you have to write. So you're not going to get ideas to write about until you write. So just to explain what happened to me. So I started off, I went to some writing classes and I found writing prompts online and did writing exercises from creative writing textbooks and at first what I was writing really was kind of fragmented scenes of stuff that had really happened to me but over time as I wrote more and more stuff and I flex my writing muscles characters emerge storylines emerge things emerged that were more than just those fragmented autobiography it became bigger and better so all I can say really is, you know, the sooner you put pen to paper, the better. The sooner you put pen to paper, the sooner you're going to have something worth reading. I think, you know, you probably won't think it is straight away. One of the things about people who are good at writing is that they've got this strong internal editor. So often you'll write stuff down and you'll think, God, that's rubbish. And it can be. And that's fine because half the job, really more than half the job, 90 percent of the job is editing and making it better. But you can't do any of that until you've actually got some words so pen to paper, fingers to keyboard, whatever is your preferred way of doing it, get some words and then you've got a starting point. OK, so my second piece of advice is kind of the opposite of the first piece, and that is to read. Now, that might sound a bit obvious as well. Hopefully it does. Hopefully the reason that you want to be a writer is because you love reading and you love books or you love film or whatever medium it is you're planning to write in, that you feel a passion for that medium. And I would encourage you to consume as much as you can to learn your art, to get to know your genre so kind of well that you just, you know, you've got a real sense of what's going on and what's going on contemporarily, also of the con the classics in your genre. You know, I would just read as widely as you can. Some people do worry about this a little bit though. Some people feel or have a, have a concern that if they read too much or if they read while they're writing, they might be influenced too much by what they're reading. And I kind of know where they're coming from. I think there's some kind of sense in that. I do remember once, it was quite a long time ago, I was reading a Bill Bryson book and I did find myself writing a bit with his rhythms and kind of putting in punchlines and all these things that weren't really very appropriate for the dark coming of age novel that I was writing. So, you know, yeah, it can happen. But I think that actually there's less danger of you being derivative if you are reading widely. The wider you read, the more you kind of know what's going on and you know what other people are doing. So the more chance you've got of actually doing something different and original. So read, read widely, enjoy your reading and, you know, learn from it.
So tip number three, it's another simple one really, and that is to keep a notebook. Now I love stationery. I love folders. I love notebooks. I love pens. I think that's part of the reason I wanted to be a writer in the first place. You may feel the same. I know a lot of my writers friends do. It seems to be a bit of a common thread from people who want to be writers. So this may not be a problem for you at all. It's certainly not a problem for me. But notebooks, it's a really handy device. Ancient technology, I hear you cry, but so powerful. Because what you can do with these notebooks is you can keep those pesky ideas from wriggling away and vanishing into thin air as they are prone to do. Let's give a typical example. You've had the most amazing dream with all these kind of amazing characters and what a storyline. It needs to be in a novel or it needs to be in a screenplay. And you wake up and you're kind of taking in that you're awake and that you stop dreaming or, you know, you're checking that you're awake if you're a lucid dreamer like me. And as you look around yourself, you think, yeah, I'll write that down later. It'll be great. And then later comes and it's completely gone. Now, dreams are a bit of a tricky example because that really happens so much with dreams and doesn't happen necessarily with ideas that you have while you're fully conscious. But some ideas stick around, some ideas don't. In my experience, the only safe way to make sure they do is to pin them down in that notebook, a little bit like butterflies in a case. So buy yourself a notebook or actually there is an alternative. This is what Hilary Mantel uses. So you'd be in good company, twice Booker Prize winner. Index cards and look, look at these little holes here. You can put them in a folder. How cool is that? They are pretty cool because what you can do is you can just grab a kind of wedge of these, put them in your bag, put them beside your bed. Never need worry about losing an idea again. Index cards, also good, or a notebook. But you need something, you need some kind of primitive device in order to make sure that those ideas don't go fluttering away on the wind. So there you go, tip number three, keep a notebook. So my tip number four is about setting targets. Now, particularly to start off with, this can be something as simple as I'm going to go to my writing desk for an hour or half an hour, however much time you have to spare. Or I'm going to go and grab a coffee at lunchtime and I'm going to do writing exercises or respond to some Internet writing prompts or, or whatever. But just something that is a regular routine that gets you writing. As you go along, you might find that it's actually really helpful to get you set yourself a, a daily target. A lot of people writing novels found this really useful because when you write your first novel or your second or your fifth or whatever, you can get yourself a bit tied up with re-editing the same parts over and over again in this kind of like deadly, horrible loop that you can't get out of. And it it, it kills you and it kills your love for the project and it stops you getting to that last 10,000 or 20,000 words. So you don't want to do that. So it can be a good idea to set yourself a daily writing target. A lot of people find a thousand words a day is a really useful target. That That's very doable. It's like about three and a half pages of A4 double spaced with a kind of normal typeface. So, you know, that's quite doable. You can do that. You don't have to do it all in one go. You could do different shifts. A thousand words a day. It works quite nicely. You might have heard of National Novel Writing Month. That happens every November. That's a challenge where you can join other like-minded individuals who are trying to write a novel. The target's quite high for that, 1,666 words daily. That's quite challenging, even for old timers like me. So, but you know, it's only one month. You can do anything for one month, I would say. There's another challenge that's just started actually, starts on the 1st of January every year, and then I think the 1st of July, and that's called 100K in 100 Days. Look it up on Facebook if you're interested. And that's, again, a bunch of people who all want to write, not necessarily novels in this case. It can be short stories or blogs. Anything at all counts, really, apart from emails and, you know, Facebook comments. Yeah, you don't get away with that. But, you know, any kind of creative writing counts. And that's a really kind of nice, supportive community. So if you're thinking about what can get you and help you push forward without 100k in 100 days, look it up on Facebook. I'm there. Wave if you see me. So tip number five, possibly the most important of all of my tips, and that is to keep the faith. So number one, what do I mean by that? And number two, what the hell does this picture of a London street have to do with anything? All right. This London Street is a place called Pimlico, or it's in a place called Pimlico, and it's about a stone's throw away from a little cafe where I sat drinking a latte with a manuscript about kind of this high. I've been doing a lot of writing. I got out all my coloured pens. I was editing the manuscript, having a grand old time. 
And then I had this bit of a crisis of confidence, just came from nowhere. I took a sip of my latte. I thought about my great professional job where I was earning quite a lot of money. And I looked at my manuscript and I thought, what the hell are you doing, girl? What is this about? What do you really think you're going to achieve with all this writing malarkey? And I just had this moment where I just felt really silly and kind of spending all of these hours and all of this time and all of this energy on this activity that might not ever come to anything. I'd not had a poem published, a flash fiction published. I'd not had a story published. I'd not had a whisper of interest from an agent. And here I was with this huge manuscript that I'd written and nothing to do with it. So yeah, this crisis came from nowhere. And I kind of looked around the cafe and I looked at my manuscript and I looked again at my latte and then I shrugged. You know, I found the strength from somewhere or just the nonchalance from somewhere or just the plain kind of deludedness from somewhere to shrug, take another sip of my latte and think, well, if I don't try, I'll never know, will I? And that's what I did. I continued and I tried. And you know what? That manuscript didn't get published. A small part of it did. A very short story, not a very short story, a short story came out of that manuscript. So all of those 80,000 words was condensed slightly into about five to be published eventually. But actually, what was on the desk just then didn't really get published in its form as it was. However, one of the things that I didn't realise as I sat there in that coffee shop with my latte and kind of decided to soldier on relentless was that another stone's throw from where I was sitting was the offices of Random House. And that was the publisher that would eventually publish my first novel. So sitting in an office not too far away were people who would typeset my book, people who would edit my book, people who would copy edit my book, people who were going to be involved in producing my book as a professional product. And there I was in that cafe having a crisis when I could have potentially walked out of that cafe and bumped into one of them in the street. How cool is that? So it's hard. It's hard to get to the end of a book. It's hard to write a novel. It's hard to get to the point where you're ready to write a novel. But the only way you'll ever know is by trying. So that's my biggest piece of advice. Just have a bit of confidence in yourself, have some belief, hard as it is, and just keep going. So my last word, good luck. I hope you do it. I hope you do start your writing. I hope you do get on with it. It's been one of the most worthwhile and rewarding things I've done in my life. And I absolutely heartily recommend it to you. So good luck.